Lord is Lord He is Lord Amen He has risen from the dead He is Lord Every new shall bow Every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. Good day, good afternoon, good morning, good day. <laughs> I don't know what it is in your country, does I'm like, you like choose morning, afternoon, or evening, but whichever way it is where you are, good day to you. I'm sorry if I've not been consistent with um, posting videos. I have been busy with the father and I'm actually enjoying my relationship with him. And today I had some people, you know, come to me and they're like, oh, we've not seen your video for a while. And I'm like, well, it's not that God has not been spoke speaking, but I don't just want to be talking without having to do my homework, which is praying before coming to teach. Why? Because it is only the Father that can make you understand. It is only the Father that can impress His Word in the life of a man. It is only the Holy Spirit that can change the life of another person through the spoken Word of God. By the grace of God, we have a very crucial and important topic to talk about today. But before we start, can we just say a word of prayer to He that can make this video a success? Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting Father, we want to say thank you. Thank you so much for your faithfulness. Thank you for your loving kindness. Thank you for your grace. Thank you for life. Thank you so much for all that you do for us. Father, be exalted in Jesus' name. Daddy, Lord, as we go into your word, please, Lord, give us the understanding of your word. We don't just want to speak the letter. The letter doesn't have life. It is only your power that can give us life through your word. Daddy, we ask, oh God, that this word will come out with power and it will change each and every one of our lives. And at the end of the day, Father, please take all the glory. I remain empty and I want you to fill me. Father, I give you praise. In Jesus' mighty name, I have prayed. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the living Jesus. Today we'll be talking about a very crucial topic. And uh, it's titled light 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 as you can see i have to be on the light i have to light is very very important to video making light is very important to a man's life light is very very much important and our text is taken from john chapter 8 verse 12 john chapter 8 verse 12 i'm reading the new living translation we say Jesus spoke to the people once more and said, I am the light of the world. If you follow me, you won't have to walk in darkness because you will have the light that leads to life. This scripture is very, very loaded. And I'm trusting God that God will help me to explain or God will help us to explore through this scripture today. And it will bless each and every of our lives in Jesus name. First of all, what is light? What can light actually be? You know, at times you just say the word light and we've not really thought about the real meaning of what light is. Light is a natural agent that activates a sight and makes things visible. For example, if the light is turned off where I am and it is dark outside, you wouldn't even be able to see me. You will only hear me but you'll be able to see who is speaking. So for what activates you seeing me now is the light, the sunlight outside and the light that is inside the room that I am in. So light is something that makes things visible. Hallelujah. It doesn't mean that the thing is not there, but you can see it because there is no light. But the moment there is light, you're like, wow. So light is something that makes something visible. And now, Jesus is a spiritual agent that makes things visible. How do I know? Jesus said, I am the light of the world. That means the world itself is darkness. Jesus said, 
I am the light of the world. So if you have Jesus in your life, that means you have an agent that, an, that can activate sight or that can make things visible. Spiritual things will become visible to you. Things will not just catch you unawares. Why? Because you have Jesus. Jesus Christ said, I am the light of the world. Hallelujah. Proverbs chapter 14 verse 12. Proverbs chapter 14 verse 12 says, There's a path before each person that seems right, but it ends in death. When Jesus Christ said, I am the light, that means anyone that follows Jesus is carrying the light. Does it mean that there are no other paths that is set before a man? Some other people can come to you and say, oh, um, you're having problems. Why don't you let us consult people that read the stars? They say, why don't you let us consult somebody that can call those small gods? Why don't you let us consult an herbalist? Why don't you let us go to this and that? Anybody that presents anything to you aside from Jesus Christ, is presenting to you a light that leads to death. In our scripture, if you say the other part, he said, okay, he said, I am the light of the world. If anyone follows me, he would not walk in darkness because he will have a light that leads to life. That means there is a light that people can present to you, but that light does not lead to life. There is a light that it can present to you, but it hangs in darkness. Proverbs 14, 12, there is a path that seems right. Oh, because you're feeling so bored and you want something to, you know, energize you, make you feel on top of, of the world and they present to you uh, drugs and they present to you alcohol, they present to you things. It seems like it's light, but it hangs in death. Hallelujah. You are having a problem with your marriage, with your, you know, I've had women that had problems in their marriages and they consult a friend and friend say, come, I have one yeah, yeah somewhere or I have one big woman somewhere that can help you. She's all powerful. She can really help you. Come, let's just go to her. And by the time they get to their uh, group, you know, it might be a group of some people that just by the time they get there and they are being initiated into that group, at the end of the day, they have to like sacrifice the same husband for them to stay in that group. It seems like a light, but the light ends in darkness. So anything anybody is presenting to you as a solution to your problem that is not talking about Jesus Christ or him crucified is a light that leads to death. It is only in Jesus that you have a very bright light that leads to life. And Jesus Christ says something. He said, if any man follows me, if, he didn't say when, he didn't say, he didn't use any other. He said, if any man follows me, that means because men are given free will, you could decide not to follow him. Hallelujah. You could decide not to follow him, maybe because of your background. Oh, my great-grandfather was a, an idol worshiper. Oh, my father was this, my father. Oh, in our generation, this is what we do. But my question is, what you do, does it actually lead to life? Oh, my great-grandfather is, is an idol worshiper. So my father too was a idol worshiper. So my grandfather too. So it is was in the lineage. But the question is your great grandfather, your grandfather and your father. How did they end their life? If they actually ended their life in a way that is not enviable, then that means it leads to death. It's a light, but it's not the light that leads to life. Oh, in our family, this is what we do. If whatever you do, does not point you to Jesus Christ and him crucified. Jesus is the only light. That means you're walking in a path that is filled with darkness. If your great-grandfather had walked in darkness, why do you also want to walk in darkness? You don't have to walk in the same path. The same path that they didn't have a sure hand. They couldn't tell you that it's going to be well with you. They couldn't even tell you that it was going to be well. They didn't even know where they are going to. And they presented the same way to you. That is a path 
that leads to death and you don't want to walk in a path like that some people it might be because they are so it might be because they are so enlightened it might be because of their bag uh, their educational background oh i have a uh, masters in this i have phd in this i am so enlightened or i went to a theology school or blah 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 whatsoever that they teach you over there and is not pointing you to jesus is a light that leads to death there's a light that leads to life and it's only in jesus you can find that light every other path every other way leads to death so no matter how educated you are you still need a light that leads to life. No matter how much of, uh, you know, you've read, you have degree in this, you have like five degrees and you know you have PhD in like four or five. No matter how educated you are, you cannot afford to continue in that light that leads to death. Why don't you come to the light that leads to life? That is the sure light that you'll be able to boast and say my tomorrow will be all right and what is that light jesus christ is that light there are some other people that might jesus christ if you follow me the category of those he the, the the category of people that don't want to follow him hallelujah or they have not seen a reason to follow him it could be because of what will people say what will people say my father was a, a, a chief imam and I become a Christian. What will people say? Now, the issue I'm discussing with you this afternoon is not about what people will say. It's about how will you hand. My great-grandfather was an idol worshiper. In short, in the whole of their village then, it was the lead. It was, they actually served the devil very well. But it didn't hand well. Hallelujah. My own grandfather was a Muslim, you know. Also, he did not hand well. There is a light that shines brighter than whatever they were carrying. And that is Jesus. Jesus Christ is the only light that leads to life. Every other light that does not point you to Jesus and him crucified is a light that does not have an assurance of tomorrow. Is a light that can be quenched at any time. When you are in Jesus, you have a an assurance that your tomorrow will be all right hallelujah in our scriptures john chapter 8 verse 12 it said you wouldn't have to walk in darkness when you are in the light of jesus you would not have to walk in darkness this life is filled with darkness whatever the world is presenting to you is presenting something in the darkness it's it's all darkness except you have jesus you don't know where to go you don't know whether you're going left or... Remember when there is no light, you're going to be stagnant for a long time. When there is no light, instead of turning right, you're turning left because you cannot even see. When there is no light, there is no speed. When there is no light, there is everything. Everything will be going wrong. There will be chaos. There will be hunger because you don't even know where to get food. When there is darkness. Several things happen to a man that walks in darkness. One... You will be controlled by forces that rules in the darkness. There are some forces in this world that they rule in this world. This is their territory. Hallelujah. Except you have the light that leads to life, you will fall into their trap. Hallelujah. Ephesians chapter 6 verse 12. I read the New Living Translation. Ephesians chapter 6 verse 12. It says, for we are not fighting against flesh and blood, enemies, but against evil rulers and authorities of the unseen world, against mighty powers in this dark world. In this world we are living in, there are, the Bible calls them mighty powers. Hallelujah. The Bible is not denying that they have powers. It's only that the power of Jesus is greater than their power. Because the little light that they think they have leads to death. The Bible says they have mighty powers and they rule where in this dark world. This world is dark. This world is filled with darkness. Anybody that does not know Jesus is holding a light that at the end of the day <clears throat> leads to darkness. These forces, when they are ruling a man that does not have the light of Jesus, these forces could decide to feed him 
with the bread of affliction and sickness. There is a bread of affliction and sickness. Sicknesses like that, the scan in the hospital doesn't detect it. Some people go to the hospital and they can't detect the kind of sickness or what is wrong with them. Why? Because they are being fed by the mighty powers or by the powers that rules this dark world with the bread of afflictions and sickness. Except you are in, in Jesus, that is when you are free from them. A man that does not have Jesus in his life, does as a weak spirit, does not have the power to resist them because you are living in their territory. You are living in this world. Whatever they give to you, you take it because you're weak. It is only when you come to Jesus that your spirit man is strengthened. Even God himself will begin to fight your battles for you. When they want to feed you with the bread of affliction and sicknesses, you can say no. Why? Because you are in Jesus. Jesus is the greater power. The Bible says, and God has highly exalted him. And has given him a name that the name of Jesus, every kneel, every kneel, name it, every kneel must bow. So when you are in Jesus, with that name, you can conquer them. Even when they bring their bread of affliction, you say, no, I don't want. Or you tell them to sit down and begin to eat it themselves. But when you are not in Jesus, any other light that they present to you is a light that is not strong enough to overcome darkness. It's a light that is not strong enough to say no to eating in the dream. It's a light that is not strong enough to say no to sex and dream. It's not life that is, it is not a light that is strong enough to overcome the spiritual wickedness in high places. Hallelujah. So these forces could also decide to feed him with bread of poverty. Anyone that is not holding on to the light of life, which is Jesus Christ. The dark, the ones that rules in the uh, in this world, the spiritual wickedness in high places, they can decide to feed him with the bread of poverty. You know that some people they work and work and work and work, but they don't have savings. As soon as their paycheck is coming or their salary is coming, something just happens. Maybe a child falls sick, or somebody just they have an accident. They just have to spend that money in a way that they cannot explain. That is because they are being controlled by spiritual wickedness in high places. They are being controlled by powers that rule this dark world. Don't let anybody deceive you. There are powers that control this world. And except you are in Jesus, you will just be playing to their tune. Whatever they like, they can do to you. If they want to kill you, they can decide to kill you. Nobody can question them. Why? Because you are not in possession of a greater power that can overcome them and the only way you can get that great greater power is when you are in jesus so they would also subject him to mental torture some people just have mental problem for no reason hallelujah it's a spiritual attack why because they are being controlled by the forces that rules in this world some people could also you know they could also feed some people with they just waste their time some people, they are supposed to be doing hey, They are doing Z. They are just roaming about. They are not actually fulfilling the purpose as, at which God has sent them to this world. There is a purpose at which God has sent you to this world. You are not here to be like another person. You are not here to copy another person. You are here to be who God has sent you to be. Now my question is, are you in the plan of God? If you have not encountered Jesus, or you have not accepted that light that leads to life. How do you want to walk in the purpose of God? Don't allow the enemy to further waste your time. Why don't you surrender everything to Jesus? So that he can align you to his plan. And you can live a fulfilled life. Also, they could make him to take wrong, wrong decisions. Some people in marriage, they took wrong decisions. In their businesses, it's wrong decision. They just keep taking wrong. When they take one step forward, they will take five steps backward because they are making wrong decisions. You don't want that to happen to you. A man that is controlled by forces in this dark world will also always make a wrong decision, especially at the end of his life. Some people had worked for 20 years, 30 years, 40 years, 50 years. When it's time for them to retire, they just make a wrong decision and everything just go, da go down the drain. You don't want that to be your portion. So therefore, Come to Jesus so that he can help you 
to end well. Also, they could make him to do what is not convenient. The people that are ruling this world, that they have authority over the, the, the children of this world, they can command them to do what is. Go and kill yourself. Go and commit suicide. Then they go to commit suicide because they don't have a strong will. They, they, they are not in possession of a stronger power that can say no. The Bible says resist the devil and it will flee from you. If you don't have Jesus in your life, the devil will not listen to you. He doesn't listen to your English. He doesn't listen to you because you have PhD. No, he only listens to the word of God. The Bible says in Romans chapter 1 verse 28, it said, Romans 1 28, it said, and even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, God gave them over to reprobate mind, to do things, those things which are not convenient. God can give a man up to a reprobate mind to do what is not convenient. Hallelujah. When a man gets married to a man, I've, when I was in school, I think I heard of some of those people that they, you know, they got married to themselves or they're in a relationship, the same sex. And when they're having sex, they have sex through the henos. It's not convenient. How do you do that? And at the end of the day, the other person starts bleeding, starts having infection. And at the end of the day, the person dies. It's not convenient. But you know, they cannot control it because there is a stronger will, a stronger power that is giving them instruction. You don't want to continue to listen to that spirit in your head. That is giving you a wrong instruction that will destroy you. Why don't you come to Jesus? It is only Jesus that can overpower that spirit. So that it doesn't destroy your body. So that it doesn't destroy even you yourself. So that you do not continue to do what is not comfortable. Or what is not convenient. Hallelujah. You don't have to walk in darkness. You just have to come to Jesus. The promise of Jesus to anyone that follows him is in John chapter 8 verse 12. He said, you will have the light of life. That's the promise of Jesus. He wants to give you that light that leads to life. But you have to come to him. You can't stay way out there and expect to have it. No, it is only in Jesus that you can have a light that leads to life. It's only in Jesus that you can have an expected hand. It's only in Jesus that you can be sure that your tomorrow will be all right. Jesus Christ said, I am the light of the world. No other person is the light of the world. No other God is the light of the world. Jesus Christ only is the light of the world. When you are in the light, sicknesses will be far away from you. Does it mean they will not come? When they come, they have to leave because they will find Jesus living in your heart. Where there is Jesus, you will make the right decision at the right time. Where there is Jesus, you will have peace of mind. Where there is chaos, where there is killing, where there is hunger, it is because darkness is dominating there. But the moment you come to Jesus, even though everything around you is darkness, you become the light. The Bible says in Matthew chapter 5 verse 14, say you are the light of the world. A city that is that a city on a hill cannot be hidden. Jesus, God expects you to be the light of the world. But you cannot be the light of the world if you are living outside Christ. Why? Jesus Christ said, anyone that follows me will not walk in darkness. I don't want to walk in darkness. I don't want things to catch me unawares. Before some things happen, God will have told me this will happen. And where I need to bind, I bind. Where I need to lose, I lose. Where I need to be cautious, I get cautious. Why? Because I have the light of God in me. When, I, when you have the light of Jesus in you, you don't make wrong decisions. When you have the right light of Jesus in you, you are not afraid. It's only in darkness that there is fear. Is there fear in your life? That's because you don't have Jesus. Hallelujah. So in my next video, we will continue with this topic. I will have to pray some prayers because God has been helping me to pray so much about this light. You need light in your life. There are some lights that can cut. You need light. The more of light you have, the more the world will respect you. The more of light you have, the more speed you will have. The more of light you have, the more of a sound health 
that you will have the more of light that you have the more you know nobody can nobody can fight you and overcome you because you are in the light a man that fights in the darkness is always losing his, a war are you losing battles in your life come to jesus till i see you next in my next video but before i go let's just have a word of prayer lord we thank you for this um teaching we really want to say thank you for how you have helped us daddy for everyone that has watched this video daddy please let your light come into their life and is there anyone that is not born again and is struggling in darkness Oh Lord, my Father, I ask that you please appear to them. Holy Spirit, do a thorough work upon them and let them come to Jesus so that they can enjoy the light of life that is in Jesus. Father, we give you praise. We give you glory. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Till I see you in my next video. The next time we're going to pray, the next time we're going to talk more on this. When you are in light, what really do you enjoy? And we're going to pray about light. So I don't want you to miss it. God bless you.